President Akufado declined to assent to the Criminal Offences Amendment Bill 2023. This was after the Speaker of Parliament, Alban Bagbin, had criticized the President for failing to communicate his stance on the Criminal Offences Amendment Bill 2023, which seeks to criminalize attacks on suspected witches. However, a communication from the presidency denied receiving the bills passed by parliament. The presidency also dismissed suggestions that he had decided not to assent to the bills. In a letter to the Speaker of Parliament, he stated that he cannot sign the bill into law over certain constitutional concerns. But the Commission on Human Rights and Administrative Justice says further delay could be detrimental. Parliament had not yet passed it. But our concern now is what the president has indicated that he has constitutional concerns about the bill but he has no problem with the content of the bill our problem as a commission is can the president speed up whatever he will do to bring that bill back to parliament whether it's through the attorney general howsoever it to be done the women cannot afford any further delay President Akufado in his letter also argued the bill must come from the executive. Shraj says it may be compelled to take on the president over his own words if a repackaging of the bill also delays. What I would expect then is send a, a signal, what we call an advisory to the president, that we cannot wait. We are supposed to be in the implementation stage of discrimination against women, particularly of the kind captured in the witchcraft bill. And so for us to be doing to in and fro in, it doesn't speak well of us as a country. On his part, the Deputy Attorney General Alfred Tuyayabua emphasized the need for corporate bodies and institutions to come up with policies that protect the rights and freedoms of their workers and staff. He also mentioned the fact that the country as a whole over the years has institutionalized robust legal regimes to promote and protect the right of people. Companies are also required to have an effective and efficient remedy such as apologies, restitutions, and compensations for these human rights abuses. Ghana, as we all know, has over the years put in place robust legal regimes and institutional frameworks to address the many challenges that may hinder the advancement of the enjoyment of fundamental rights and freedoms. And I must add that Ghana is a state party to almost all the international instruments regarding fundamental human rights. Christian Yale, TV3 News, Accra.